Hello everybody, Trano here, and today on the Air Superiority Dev Server, we are going to be taking a look at the new top tier Chinese tank, the VT-4B, which is coming after the WZ-1001E LTT. And in many ways, this represents a bit of a side grade from the previous tank, depending on which stats you favour more. So starting off with the gun, the gun itself is worse in my opinion. So it's got a longer reload rate, 7.1 seconds instead of 6.5. It has an auto loader. It's got first stage ammo storage of 22 shells instead of four. It's got the same horizontal and vertical guidance and the horizontal targeting speed is the same at 18 degrees a second, but the vertical targeting speed is only 3.4 degrees instead of 6.2 on the previous tank. And it has a two plane gun stabilizer. But even worse is the muzzle velocity. So basically with this heat FS shell, it's got the same penetration, but on the previous tank, it did 930 meters a second. Here it only does 905. Again, with the APFS DS rounds, they do less muzzle velocity and seem to have 10 to 12 millimeters less penetration than the previous shells at 500 meters. The anti-tank guided missile is unchanged. So same penetration, same muzzle velocity, and the same with the HEVT shell, lower muzzle velocity. But again, I don't know how often they get used in tank battles at the higher tiers. And your gunner has optics of 6x zoom to 10 times zoom, while your commander has 3 times to 107 times zoom. And the gunner and commander have access to thermal vision devices, while the driver and tank commander both have access to night vision devices. It also comes with a laser warning system and laser range finder, which is obviously good, as well as a smoke generating system and smoke grenades. And up top here in this rather prominent position, you have a 7.62mm machine gun, and then your Karaxal. 12.7mm machine gun. So yeah, basically the armament seems to be pretty much worse in most respects. And if we move to the armor, it's better in some ways and worse in others. So you've got a lot of ERA at the front here, but you don't have the composite armor. Like you've got a little bit of RHA armor here, but it's only 5mm, unless that's um, been put in wrong, because that does look quite a bit more substantial than 5mm, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. So I'm guessing that's supposed to be the composite armor, but again, I can't actually judge it on what it's supposed to be. I can only judge it on what it is at the moment. But the ERA provides quite a bit of protection against kinetic and chemical rounds. So 450 millimeters against heat rounds, 140 millimeters against your kinetic rounds. And you've got some composite armor up here, very strong composite armor. Now this bit of ERA armor seems to be a little bit confusing because like I say, it's explosive reactive armor. So it's supposed to explode, you know, in reaction to enemy weapons. But if you go to armor and show ex um, get rid of the external armor, it looks like it's not bolted onto anything. I suppose I think it's supposed to be bolted onto this structural steel, but it's a bit weird that once that ERA armor's gone, you've only got 10 millimeters of protection. However, it makes a bit more sense when you remember this is fitted with an APS system. So you've got four of these bolted around the turret, your front right, back right, back left, and your back front. And then you've got these two APS systems on the turret roof. And they have a reaction time of about 300 milliseconds. Set threat velocity 50 to 1400 meters a second. So presumably anything faster than that, it might not necessarily intercept them. And it's got four pieces of countermeasure. The ones on the roof are again about the same reaction time and only two pieces of countermeasure, but it doesn't mention a velocity. So presumably that can intercept more weapons. Again, I don't really play top tier, so I can't comment on that entirely. And if we just take a look at this with the protection analysis, so let's say the American SEP V2. Yeah, it's a bit vulnerable to heat rounds, especially around there. Although, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. You've got all this ERA here. And again, the multi-purpose shell, about the same. But then you go to APFS DS and it's a lot more vulnerable. So the top tier APFS DS round. And while it's not a perfectly guaranteed shot, a mo you know, you can probably do decently well against this tank. And this is at 500 meters. So if you get closer, say, I don't know, literally... 100 meters that will obviously improve your chances of penetrating the armor a little bit yeah just look at it with uh he shells you don't even have to get a shell on the roof just around the mantle and you'll be able to do massive damage with he shells and then moving on to the engine it's got a 1150 horsepower engine and it's got six gears going forward for a top speed of 44 miles per hour going forward and a top speed in reverse of 9.2 miles per hour on two gears. And then you've got your free crew. So you've got your commander and gunner in the turret. Commander can also fire the main gun. And then you've got your driver in the hull. So like I say, this does seem to be a bit of a side grade. So the armor isn't necessarily the best in the world 
but you do have all this APS system for extra protection. The gun is just substantially worse in most ways other than the autoloader. The top speed is slightly slower than the previous tank and the crew count is the same. So um, like I say, I have a feeling this isn't completely finished yet. I mean, you can see this little bit of purple around here, which I think is the same colour as the Leopard 2, which also isn't finished. So presumably there will be some changes to this before it goes out on the main server. And yeah, I'll be interested to see how this plays when it's released. Anyway, this is just a quick video looking at the VT4B. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll join me for the next episode. I've been Toreno, and I'll see you next time.